and welcome to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. I'm Fenris. And tonight we're reviewing Kids on the Slope. Okay, it's been a while for the two of us, yeah? Yeah, a couple weeks. I kept not watching this. <laughs> Understandable. It's... it's... something. <laughs> But it, it, it's not even because I didn't like the first episode. I It took me three weeks to start this anime. And it's because you... Made you. You made me watch this, yes. Like, I, I was like, dude, let's get together, let's hang out, and let's get it done. First week I was sick. I, I was not well enough to do a recording but after that i was just procrastinating i <laughs> you you were pulling a centauro <clears throat> absolutely i oh my god i still haven't in these three weeks i haven't done an episode i haven't edited so oh god those of you watching this in the future this episode is being recorded between the first and second episodes being put on YouTube. Yes. Because I suck at editing and computer crashes and procrastination. Yay! Um, okay, so, moving on to the show. Kids on the Slope is about two lovable assholes and their friend Ritsuko as they work their way through high school and all the awkward stuff that comes through with being in high school. The love, the drama, the only different thing being that it takes place in the 60s and they all love jazz music. I've got a very important question to ask you. What is it? Do you like jazz? I love it. Do you like jazz? I was not a big fan of jazz until last year. I don't know. It never really piqued my interest. I've listened to it before, but it it did nothing for me. And can I can I plug another channel? Is it okay with you? Yeah, I mean, plug what you want. A year ago, I I was just I love listening to video game music, and I was scrolling through YouTube looking for some cool covers to listen to, and I found a channel called Insane in the Rain Music, and yeah. they just do tons of jazz covers of different video game music, and I mm -hmm. fell in love with jazz. Well, well, you see, I've been involved in jazz for multiple years, mostly since high school, because oh. I wound up, wound up sort of dating a guy in jazz band. Okay. And when that happens, you sort of grow an appreciation for the music, like, you like, oh, you gotta go to their performances and stuff. Yeah, you're you're pretty much obligated to. And uh, the jazz band actually did the opening theme for uh, Grin Lagan as one of their shows. <laughs> oh, that's cool. At, at the high school, <laughs> it was beautiful. The tuba player I'm is a mutual friend of mine. He used the Steinsgate old key to make it state. <laughs> but, yeah, I love jazz. wonder what the viewers think of jazz. You guys like jazz? There is a lot of jazz in this show. You could say it's about jazz. Well, you could also say it's about love, love. about friendship, a lot about... Some really dumb fucking drama. <laughs> a lot of drama. Very, very dumb drama. Do you remember all of the stupid shit you did in high school? Um, uh, not all of it, but the... some of it. I'm not just talking to you, uh, Fenris. I'm talking to the audience as well. The confessions, the, <laughs> the betrayals... The, the, you can't spit out what you feel about someone. Just fucking talk. No one's gonna know what you mean unless you say it to them. Welcome to Kids on the Slope. I think we should get into the characters. Yeah, definitely. We have, what, four characters that we 
really follow more. Well, not four, it's more like five, and we only really give a hoot about three of them. Really, honestly, we only care about one of them. <laughs> what do you mean we only care about one character? And that's Are best you... girl Rico. Yeah, we care about Rico. Rico matters, her feelings matter, everyone's Rico. a big stupid. Rico is the only good character in this show. Well, in the sense that they actually fucking talk to people. <laughs> well, sometimes. Uh, sometimes. They're the most forward member of the cast, right? Yeah. Next to Brother June, and Brother June's kind of a dick. Oh, God, Brother June. So, our main trio consists of two assholes and best girl. Yeah. We've got Sentaro Kawaguchi, who is a hoodlum who likes to start fights and play the drums. And we've got Kaoru Nishimi, a whiny bitch who likes to uh, play jazz with a certain drummer dude and uh, is inept at trying to get with girls. Is that about right? Yeah. And we've got... Oh god, what's her full name? I just know her as Rico. Oh yeah, R yeah, Rico Mukai or something. But her oh, we just call her Rico. Much like we call Sentaro, Sen, and Kaoru Richie. Sen cause... calls Nishimi Richie because he's rich. Yeah. He gave him that nickname in episode one and it's stuck for the entire series. Like, at one point, you legitimately forget his name. I only know his name is Nishimi because it's written down in front of me. I don't know his first name, unless Nishimi is his first name. That's his last name, dude. It's like Kaoru. Great. So, yeah, we, his name's Richie. Yeah, his name's <laughs> Richie. He's rich. Richie rich. Mr. Bill Evans himself. <laughs> And Rico's a nice girl. She she uh, grew up with with Sen. They're childhood friends. And her yeah. father owns a record shop, in which they play jazz in the basement. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like an after school thing. And and then there's Yurika and Brother Jean, but we really don't care about them. If you pointed to Eureka's character and asked me what her name was? You'd, you'd be like, who? I, who, who is that? I, shit, what is her name? She's just so bland. It's like, Herkader, I'm beautiful and rich. I'm sure there there's people that like her character, but I just wanted to get back to the main three whenever yeah. she was on the screen. And when she was with the main three, you like, really cared more about the main three. Yeah. Like, can we... Let's, let's, let's go play some more jazz. Let's get back to the jazz. Yeah. Well, let's get back to our friends playing jazz. <laughs> and uh, as, Brother June. What's his relation to them again? He's neighbors with uh, Rico. Okay, I legitimately thought he was Sen's brother for a while. Yeah, you do. They're just close family friends. Okay, that uh, that clears that up for me. And uh, he's just, he plays the trumpet in the band. Yeah. He goes to school in Tokyo and is cool. Except when he stops being cool. <laughs> and has a downward spiral. His and when... life went to shit. I and... know. <laughs> Friendly reminder, kids, don't join the Japanese Communist Party, <laughs> like he did. Now we've got a general handle on the show. We've introduced yeah. the characters. How do we start out? Let's talk about some of the stuff that happens, like our favorite moments or that. That is yeah. a great idea, but, but... Spoilers? 
I forgot to write one down. <laughs> what about that scene at the school festival with Sun and Richie? Oh my god, yes! That's my favorite next to the ending, and I'm not gonna spoil that. It's like, that's legitimately the best. Let's talk about that. I was gonna say any time they're playing music, but that specifically was amazing. Yeah. It's the best piece in the show. It's the best bit of character development. It's just the best part, in our opinion. Would it be okay if we talked about the first episode before we jumped into this? Yeah, let's let's just talk about the first episode. Okay. So, as we start off this adventure in high school and jazz... Our boy Richie has just transferred to a new school. A school in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. It's on a slope. It's on an incline. It's stupid high schoolers on an incline. That's the show. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's the show. So Rich Richie's in a new school. He's transferred to new schools many times in the past. He knows what's going on by now. He goes he, in, tries not to draw too much attention to himself, doesn't want to get picked on by any bullies. He just wants to be left alone. He's an introvert. Yeah, he's he, he's like me. He just wants to sit there, chill, get his education, and then bail. Nothing complicated about it. The school day goes by. He's been given a tour around the school. By best girl. And suddenly... He's pegged in the head by a baseball. Time for some bullies. That that one thing he didn't want to happen. And he kind of has a panic attack. Yeah. He gets those. They suck. <laughs> they do. But, but he, he goes to the one place of sanctuary for him. The roof. And when he gets to the roof, he sees that door is locked and there's just a blanket covering a, a bench. And then he rips the blanket off the bench and he sees our man, Santara. In a very homoerotic moment. It's pretty gay. Homos but on a hill. <laughs> That's the show. Ah, homosexuals on a hill. Yes. He, he asks for the key, yeah. winds up, the thugs follow and they're like, Sen, we want the key. You've been hoarding it. They're like, we want the roof. A senior's got to smoke. And so they they try and force the key from Santaro. And he's like, fuck you, and fights him. Yeah. Our boy Richie's like, yo, I kind of want to get onto the roof. And, and Sen's like, cool. I'll go beat these guys up for it. And he beats the shit out of them. He gets the key. Yeah! Yeah. It's good time. Good time for everyone. After that, a beautiful, jazzy friendship forms. They go to the nurse to get patched up. And Sen starts tapping away with some pencils. It's like, oh, that sounds like jazz. And then he's like, you like jazz, kid? <laughs> and Richie's like, I uh, prefer classical. And then Santaro calls him a stiff. It's a fun time. But the show moves at lightning speed. I cannot remember the rest of episode one. Uh, they just go hang out in the record shop, I think. Huh. The two hang out on the roof. They get soaked in the rain. They go to the record shop. All's cool in the middle of nowhere. Episode one is just setting up some character Fun. relations. Yeah. And the relations are fan friggin' -tastic. Except when they're not. Except when uh, you... By episodes two and three, I was uh, screaming at the... My computer. And I assume you were also screaming. Oh yes. Very much so. Dumb drama. 
I love it. Dumb, it's dumb great. Drama. It's the best. Dumb. Except they, to, they don't really linger on it that long. The main cause of the problems in this show is that the characters are dumb high schoolers that don't know how to talk to express their feelings. Yeah. Richie sets Sen up with a woman. And then the three, well, then the four go to hang out. And things go well between Sentaro and the woman. But then, our boy Richie realizes that this is making Rico sad, and it's he, he likes her and doesn't want to see her sad. So he gets mad and pissy at Sentaro about it. We had a tantrum <laughs> count going on while we were watching yeah, the show. Yeah, we had a, a Richie tantrum count going down. I think the show ended at tantrum count of three, and then one tantrum from Sentaro. <laughs> I counted. I was counting the tantrums in this show. <laughs> oh, boy. The main drama in this show is misunderstandings. The show doesn't linger on these misunderstandings for more than one episode very often, but there's so many misunderstandings that it it's still a problem. I... Oh. You just want to... Scream! I want to punch some high schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to punch. Okay, here, here's the way I'd go about it. Backhand to Sentaro and give him a hug. Whack Richie, don't give him a hug. <laughs> hug Rico. Slap Brother June. Slap Eureka. <laughs> slap everyone else. Slap all the side characters. No. Except for the except for Rico's dad. Yes, that that was the that was the one I was thinking of. Don't slap Rico. him. He's pretty cool. He plays the cello. R Rico's dad is fantastic. Or is it the bass? And he's very good at ignoring the fact that he lets his daughter hang out alone in a basement with two guys while he's upstairs chilling. Ah, they're just playing jazz. Yeah, that's what all the thumping of the drums and the piano are. <laughs> that's why there's all the banging and crashing. But yeah, they're just playing jazz. Whenever they're playing music, it just... This show draws me in. The, the bits of music are my favorite in this show. Yeah. The music they they perform as well as like the insert songs are all like famous jazz songs yeah like, my favorite episode is actually a the one where we go visit richie's mom and like at the end of the episode it's just it starts playing the record that he gave her at like the end and you just get to hear like this soft the song softly playing and singing as you see all the characters go back to their daily lives. And yeah, it I'll... just soothes you. The show touches on popular songs and artists of the time. Yeah. I learned... I, I found quite a few songs that I knew and didn't know the titles of, or just... New music, new jazz music that I didn't know before, and, and yeah. that's great. I love it. And they even like you can actually tell the time frame of the show based on what certain characters say or do. Like at one point, Rico's dad is like out front in the middle of summer in like a full suit, and someone asks him. What's up? Why, why are you wearing this suit in the middle of the fucking summer? He's like, oh, I'm in mourning. Richie's like, oh, who died? And he's like, Coltrane died? And, and they're just, but they both looked sad. You know? Yeah. Stuff like that. 
or or the or the thing with the Beatles, and how that actually causes a drama arc in the show. Yeah, <clears throat> another character's trying to start up a band to be like the Beatles because he wants to be popular with the ladies. And he recruits Santaro on like drums, which causes Richie to have a fucking temper tantrum. Yeah. I want to you touch on this real quick before we get to what to, to what we're going to talk about. What you're leading up to. Yeah. So, at the start of the show, Richie just plays classical music. That's what he's been taught to play. That's... It's what know. his family likes to yeah. see him play. They actually got weird looks from him when they saw... Like, during a montage when they see him playing the piano and it's not classical. So he's stiff and rigid in the beginning, just playing this classical music. Then he meets Sen, and he introduces him to the world of jazz. And he tries to learn some jazz to, uh, to kind of one-up Sen. It's like, hey, this stuff's pretty easy, I can do it. He finds out jazz isn't too easy. Yeah. Because Richie's all about being perfect. Mm-hmm. But jazz ain't about being perfect. Yeah. It's about the feeling you put into it, the soul, the imperfections. The swing. Yeah. And over the course of this anime, we can see Richie embrace more of this... Swing. Yeah. That's... The best way to call it. He starts loosening up, not just in his piano playing, but in, like, life, too. You see him crack jokes, get into a snowball fight. As we stated earlier, the characters don't really say much what they're feeling. But where we see the most character development, where we see the characters express themselves the most is in what they play and how and they play they, it. A lot of it's like do not you know express. It's like oh I'm gonna do this but damned if I'm gonna say my feelings. I don't wanna be emotionally vulnerable to that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Getting back to what we were talking about earlier. The Richie Tantrum and the Beatles. Yes. So, Richie and Sen stopped playing jazz for a while, and Sen joined up with the, uh, what were they called, the Olympus? Yeah. Yeah, the Olympus, which is a Beatles cover band, I guess? That's the best way to describe it. Were they covers, or were they just doing similar music to the... Oh, Beatles, similar music. I didn't really pay much attention to them. Oh, they, they did a lot of Japanese pop songs, poppy, rocky sort of stuff. You uh. know, stuff that, that would make the girls chase them. Yeah. And this makes Richie very, very upset. So, the band, The Olympus, is playing at the school talent That's show cool. they're up on stage and the amps stopped working got no sound coming out their fancy electric guitars and stuff aren't working and richie's on the festival committee and people are starting to get antsy they're complaining they're starting to leave and although richie was a little bit spiteful about the whole thing he starts playing the piano and Sen joins in. And I don't really have words for this. It's the best scene in the show. It makes you feel like you've come home, right? <laughs> At this point, he and Richie probably haven't talked in what's like a month and a half, maybe? Because they sort of stopped talking to each other. Or playing jazz with each other. But then they start playing, and it's like... They're talking to each other through their instruments. And there's just so much emotion coming out. And there's no words being said. It's, it's 
it's beautiful and it shows just how much both of them have grown in the episodes leading up to this. And how much they actually give a shit about each other. Just remember, when you have trouble in your life, you can solve it with jazz. Solve your problems with jazz. But that scene is very fantastic. That scene and the ending are my personal favorite moments. Next to the jazz battle between Sen and Brother June. Oh, and yeah. they go hard in it, right? They really put the emotional weight behind the things that matter. The music. Because God knows these characters can't fucking talk to each other, like, at all. While we're on the topic of the music, shall we talk about the animation a little bit? Oh yeah, the animation swimmingly with the music. When you see them playing their instruments, or like, Richie touching a key on the piano, it's not like, generic animated da 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 you can actually like, see his hands moving across the piano, as well as, like, Sen's arms hitting precise moments and, like, in a proper order instead of just going, like... They're uh, people. In... Yes. They're people playing instruments and making noise. Yes, that comes when the key or the drum is hit, not before or after, like, right then. It's impeccable timing between the music and animation. You repeat what you saw in the show in real life, it would sound... Some, somewhat similar. Yeah. Depends on your skill your and the quality of instrument you're playing, but you get what I'm saying, probably. I, I get it. If Richie plays a C and you, you press that same button on a real piano you get that same note yeah in perfect timing and it's amazing i i don't have much to say about the art and animation about the show it's beautiful backgrounds it, it, it looks great but it doesn't stand out to me especially compared to other anime i've seen but same. i love the look of them playing their instruments it's really fantastic. Fantastic. That's the best word to describe it. Uh, and the music, not just when they play it. The opening's good. The ending theme is good. We listen you to that opening almost every... Actually, we listened to it every single time, didn't we? Yes. We skipped the ending theme once. And that's because we wanted to watch the final episode. We got a little invested in the finale and skipped the ED. One of my favorite scenes is when the cast performs my favorite things. Oh yeah. And and you get like Rico singing. She's got a wonderful voice, by the way. Y you said yeah. that when she was singing that her her Japanese voice actor sang that song. Yeah, I'm pretty sure sounded wonderful and then afterwards they're all laying on the floor improvising their own favorite things lyrics yeah i love these characters like sen just says he loves drums watermelon and onigiri <laughs> rico's like I like the sounds of the piano and drums riffing in my in the basement. And Richie's inner monologue says, Oh, I really like Rico. But I'm never gonna say it because I don't fucking talk. And then he's just like, you know what? This, this I like. <laughs> but like, what Rico says is like, she essentially says, My favorite thing is are you and Sentaro coming to the shop and you and Sen riffing in the basement? <laughs> it's so sweet. When we were watching this, you pointed something out to me about 
the director of yeah, the show. Yeah, I did. It's got a special certain director, a little bit unexpected. And who might that be? A Shinichiro Watanabe of Cowboy Bebop fame. He directed the first six episodes. And Course. you can kind of tell. Of course he's directing a show about jazz. It's like, you can see his influences, but they're not screaming at you, right? I mean, you've still got your Yoko Kano doing the soundtrack, and your Shinichiro Watanabe, but it's very different from his own original shows. It's more grounded than a bebop or a space dandy but it's also 10 times more frustrating oh the drama the drama get it out the drama. be gone drama <laughs> voice acting was there was a reason why i made you watch the sub you showed me the dub before as well. Yeah. A little bit of it. And I didn't really have much trouble with it. Like, uh, I thought I it was fine. There might be a disconnect with the singing in the show, you know? Ah. Like, when they're doing the My Favorite Things thing. It's for more subtle stuff like the singing. Or that. Okay. So you'd say that the best way to watch this show is in subbed? Yeah, but I won't fault you for watching the dub. It's just, I can't listen to it. It doesn't sound right. Okay. I, I'm usually not a subs v dubs person. I'm like, watch whatever is convenient, but this one's just like, ah, oh, the subs so good. Okay. But we should probably wrap this up. I was thinking the same thing. What kind of rating would you give this show? I give it seven moody assholes out of ten. I don't about... know. I'm it's... a bit conflicted. You love hate it. But I feel like a seven is a good number for this. Because I love the music, I love the characters, I love the character development, but it reminds me of how dumb I was in high school, and I, it's just so much drama. So much drama. The most drama drama. You're all dumb and you need to learn how to talk. This show gets a seven. Yeah, it's seven. It's well made, but annoying. If you like jazz... If you like Jazzy Boys, I think you'll enjoy this anime. I yeah. don't know if I could have gotten through this without watching it with you. Uh, so it may require alcohol or a friend. <laughs> <laughs> God knows I watched this one episode at a time. Because I could not even deal with Ricky's bullshit. Watching it with a friend definitely heightens the experience. Next time on Night Parade, we're going to be watching Natsume Yujin Cho. I'm excited. I have not seen it. Natsume's Book of Friends. I love this one. I think you're going to... I think you're going to love it. Alrighty. Alright, then. We've shared our thoughts with you, and the Night Parade has come to an end. See you next time. Later. Later. The show is fucking dumb and I love it.